G'day guys, Big Ordin here, and today in this video, we're going to make a main menu for our game uh, with a working play button, options button, and quit button. This is following up from last week's video where we created a splash screen for our game. Before we get started though, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Admix. Admix is the most advanced advertisement platform for your game, no matter what platform you're designing for. Featuring non-intrusive ads, players can keep on playing your game while you make money. Trusted by over 500 developers worldwide, you know you're in good hands. You don't need to code anything, just drag and drop ad placements into your game world, design them, alter them, and let Admix populate it with the hundreds of companies using this to advertise. The plugin is fully integrated into your Unity project, and it takes less than an hour to get set up. You can also track your ads and optimize them through external analytics. Check out the link in the description to get started with Admix today. And thank you to Admix for sponsoring this video. Now as I said, last week we created this splash screen, but the thing is when their player starts up the game, they're going to see that splash screen and they're going to get thrown straight into our game, which we don't want because every game has a main menu. They have somewhere for the player to sit to get ready to play and then once they're ready they can click the play button and they can, you know, change their options as well and quit, press the quit button if they want to quit the game. So let's make that. So to get started we're going to go up to file, new scene, and we have a new blank scene. Let's save it. I'm going to name this main menu. And we'll put it in a scenes folder if you have one. Put this into 2D mode to help us working with UI. And we're going to start by making a background for our menu. So we're going to right click in our hierarchy, go down to UI and panel. It's going to spawn in this panel. Let's change the color to a black and increase the opacity. On our canvas, we'll change the render mode to screen space camera and we'll drag in the camera so the uh, panel fits to our camera. As you can see though, the panel isn't taking up the full width of the camera, so I'm just going to scale it up to 1.5 on the X and the Y. So we have our background, now let's make some buttons for some interactivity with our menu. On our canvas, right click, UI, and we're going to create text first, but don't choose the standard Unity text, we're going to choose Tech Mesh Pro because it gives us more options to alter the text and make it to our liking. I'm going to center it, and I'm going to change the text to say, Play. I'm going to change the size to 56 and we're going to bold it. I'm going to change the color to a nice goldish color and I'm also just going to zoom in here and just increase the size like that. And I'm going to move it into the center. Now with our text we're going to right click on it, go down to UI, button. This is going to bring in a button, make sure to delete this text element of that button because we already have our text. On our button, change the rec transform to this option but make sure you hold alt while doing it and it's going to fill the button to fill up the uh, text size. So when we are changing the size of our text object, it's changing the size of the button. On our button, we're going to change our normal color to completely uh, see-through so we can actually see our text. Now if we click play, you can see our button is working, but the colors aren't great. So let's change that. On our highlighted color, change it to a gray, and we'll set the opacity to 50. On our press color, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select the same color from before, and I'm going to make the opacity 120. For our selected color, I'm actually going to choose the uh, color from our text and set the opacity to 160. And if we test that now, you can see it works better now. I'm going to rename this text object to play button and I'm going to duplicate it to create our next button, which is going to be our options button. We'll move it down and I'll change the text to say options. Once again, I'm going to duplicate it, I'm going to create our quit button and make the button say quit. I'm then going to move the quit button down. You can see we have our buttons. You might want to change the uh, width of the button so you can, don't have the font sticking out of it. I'm going to do that real quickly now. Now as you can see our buttons are working now and we can also uh, use our arrow keys to go between them and press the enter key to select the buttons. But as you can see the buttons don't actually do anything. They're just useless buttons. They don't have any action. We need them to do something. So to do that, we're going to write a quick script. First, before we do that though, we're going to create an empty game object under our canvas. I'm going to name this main menu. We're going to select our buttons and put it under our main menu. Then on our main menu uh, object, we're going to add a component and we're going to make a main menu script. Make it a new script and open it up in Visual Studio. You can delete the stock standard functions here because you don't need them because what we're going to do is write our own functions which we're going to assign to the buttons. So in this script, we're going to write functions for our play button and our quit button. The reason we're not writing one for our options button is because we're going to use the Unity UI event system to manage that, to switch between the options menu and the main menu. So let's start by making our first function, which is going to be our play button. So we're going to do a public void play the game. 
We're doing making sure it's public so that the Unity editor can see it. Now what we want to do for this function is that when the player presses the play button, uh, it sends them from, their, from this main menu scene to the game scene. And to do that, we use the scene manager. So let's import that. I'm going to write using Unity Engine dot scene management. Then in our function, we're going to start up the scene manager, and then we're going to choose to load a scene. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You could either write the the string name of your scene, or you can write the index number of your scene that's in the scenes to build list, which you can find under file, build settings, and you'll see here it says scenes and build, has all your scenes that you've placed in here, and you have the little index numbers. Uh, I prefer just to use the, the string name, so I'm gonna write dev scene, as that's the name of my game scene. And that's everything you need for the play button. Now let's make a function for our quit button. So we're gonna do public void quit the game. Open that up, and all you have to write is application.quit. So if this game was an actual build, this function would quit that application. But since we're in the Unity editor at the moment, it won't do that. So just to prove that this works, we're going to write debug.log quit the game. Just to prove that the function works when we press the button. And that's everything you need for the script. So let's head back to Unity, and let's assign those functions to the correct buttons. So under our play button, on the button element, you'll see here there's an on-click event. Uh, the list is currently empty, so let's add an event with the plus button. Uh, it wants us to drag in an object, so we're going to drag in our main menu object because that's where the script is attached to. And under function, we're going to go down to main menu script, and we're going to choose play the game. On our quit button, we're going to do the same. Go down to the button, go to the on-click event, add an event, drag in our main menu object, uh, select the main menu script function, quit the game. So now let's test these two buttons. So we'll test our quit button first. You can see that the messages come up saying quit the game, which means the function is working. And if we click the play button, it's going to send us to our game. Now I should mention that if you do get an error where it says the scene isn't added to your load order or build order, uh, just make sure you actually have that scene in your scenes to build list here. This is so that Unity knows it's a part of the game and not just sitting here in your assets folder. So now we have those two buttons working, but we need the options button now. And as I said before, we're not going to use scripts because we're going to use the UI event system to manage this. But first we need to make an options menu. So let's duplicate our main menu and let's rename it to options menu. Let's remove the script and expand the uh, options menu. We'll disable the main menu so we can look at the options menu itself and we're going to delete the play button because we don't need that. Uh, on the options button we're just going to delete the button element because we want to keep the, the, the text. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to rename the quit button to return button as this is going to act as our uh, button to take us back to the main menu. As such I'm going to rename the button uh, the text to say return. I'm going to scale down the font to 30 so it's not as prominent and I'm going to move the options text up. And now this is where you can add all your different settings and options that will uh, change your game and whatnot. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how to do that, let me know down in the comments. But for this tutorial, we're going to leave the options menu as this. So now the question is, how do we switch between these two menus? Well, we're going to use the UI event system. We're going to go to our options button and go to the on-click event. We're going to add an event and it wants us to drag an, ob uh, an object again. Now, since we're not using scripts, we're going to use a, a built-in function that disables and enables game objects. So as such, if we're clicking the options button from the main menu, we want to disable the main menu and enable the options menu. So we'll do that by dragging our main menu, go into function, game object, set active, and we're going to uncheck it saying, no, we don't want to set this as active. We want to disable it. Then we're going to add a second event. We're going to drag in our options menu, uh, get, add the same function, I'm going to say yes, we do want to enable the options menu because we're going to it. Then on our return button in our options menu, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add our main menu, we're going to add our game object set active, we're going to say yes we do because we're going back to our main menu, and then we're also going to put in our options menu, same function, game object set active, we're going to say no, we don't want to set it as active. So now we click play, and let's test this. So I'm going to click the options button, Boom, it sends us to our options menu. I'm going to click the return button. Boom, it sends us back to our uh, main menu. And once again, let's test the other buttons. Quit, 
gives us a quit message, so it works. Options, options work. Play, sends us to a game. And that's everything you need to know to make your main menu for your game. If this tutorial helps you out, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more game dev and Unity related content like this. If you have any questions or just any general comments and feedback, please leave it down in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Other than that guys, thank you for watching, thank you to Admix for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time.